Hi, my name is Ken Hughes and welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about automation, automation and robotics. Uh, I was at a conference recently where we were speaking all about automation and its influence and I suppose effect on customer expectation experiences and customer experience overall. Now, if you look at your life today, there are some elements that have been automated, digitized, that makes your life easier, instant, more real. And so think about paying with your phone. Tap, 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 so easy for us. We don't need to carry cash anymore and notes, digital payment, you don't even need to take your card out, your phone just taps. Beautiful, nice and easy. Also, sometimes when you do that two-factor authentication on your phone and that little text message comes in with the six-digit code, there are some websites that auto-fill that for you so you don't have to remember, you don't have to type it in, just auto-fills. You know that feeling, oh my God, instant easy. So certain automation aspects make our lives easier and they're wonderful. Every time I park my car at the airport, as I approach the, uh, the system, reads my vehicle registration, lifts the barrier automatically and I go straight through. No ticket, I feel like James Bond every time, it's so special. So there's little moments that happen along a customer journey that are automated for us, that use our data, that make it easy for us to buy, they're all wonderful things. The problem with automation in some aspects of technology is that people think that technology is the answer. Instead of seeing it as an enabler for customer experience, they see technology and digital transformation as the thing they need to do, they keep pushing, 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 and ultimately, sometimes end up using technology for the sake of technology. This is one of my favorite examples. Have a look at this. This is a real product from Russia called the Smart Bee, an intelligent stroller that allows you to just run alongside the, the stroller without having to touch it. It follows you via your smartwatch. Have you ever seen anything so ridiculous? It's even got an anti-theft device that you can lock and walk away from your baby. Who would leave their baby, one of the most precious things in your life, in a stroller and just run along next to it? This is insane. You know, it, it meeting a need that doesn't even exist the problems another really famous example that I always loved was the Rebecca Minkoff store in the in, in New York one of their concept stores and they digitized the whole store and what was interesting about this was that they had these digital mirrors that you can go into RFID enabled tags you go in the system knows what you have it puts up on the screen other things you could buy with the thing you're about to buy I get that that's a great upsell but unfortunately they show a model on the digital mirror wearing the exact thing that you're about to try on now imagine you're in the sales space you're about to try on something and in front of you is a beautiful photoshopped model size zero wearing what you're about to try on of course the contrast isn't great and you look like an elephant <laughs> compared to them and so they're undermining the sales process inside the sales area by digitizing that and so sometimes automation and digital isn't exactly what we want but then sometimes it's amazing as I said I was checking into a hotel once there was a huge check-in queue about 20 30 people at a US hotel it was in Vegas and I turned and there was some check-in kiosks I thought oh my god fantastic Go in, type in your name, type in your reference number, out pop the key cards, that was it, done, one minute. And so sometimes automating a process where there is friction and pain points is amazing. Uh, the e-passport machines in airports, fantastic if there's a huge queue at the, at the booth for the police immigration, you just sail straight through. However, if there's a massive queue at the gates for the e-passports and there's no one at the human, we all will take the human. And that's interesting because actually we still crave human contact, of course, but humans sometimes just do it better. They do it faster. And what's interesting about automation, some people claim they're doing customer experience automation when really it's just cost saving. And my favorite example of this is the McDonald's order kiosks. So McDonald's has stripped out four or five cashiers from most of the restaurants. You now have to order on that kiosk. It takes longer to order on a digital kiosk than it would ever do to save it to a human I'd like a big mac and fries no pickle diet coke please to go takes me about five six seven seconds to say whereas that will take 40 to 50 seconds to actually input at least 10 or 15 clicks on the screen by the time you get to the payment point so what's it about is it about making the customer experience easier no it's not actually it makes it slower and when you think about fast food that's the point <laughs> McDonald's are in the fast food business and what they've done is they've slowed down the ordering process and so it ultimately goes against their very core proposition because they're automating a piece of the customer experience not because they want to improve the customer experience it's because they want to save money they want to strip out those cashiers and so be very careful in your business when you're looking at automation and digitization as to why you're doing it are you doing it to save money and maybe you have to because there's a labor shortage I get that but ultimately sometimes it damages the customer experience automation is never the answer technology is an enabler if you get it right and you get the technology right and the digital piece right and it comes in at a point in the customer journey that excites and delights and makes the the, the whole experience more seamless and frictionless then it's fantastic if not it just sometimes causes more work and that is not what we want until next time i'm ken Hughes.